All right, all right. Tuesday night, 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Welcome to the eighth inning of humanity. And that's, I, I, that's, that's pretty much where we are. Okay, we have so much to do. We Josh, have, come uh, on, it's still so early. It's really not. This is, this is the twilight. It's, it's all coming to an end. Uh, okay, so we have a brand new sponsor, though. And Michael's going to tell you a little bit about Percent. It's a little company called Percent, which is a platform that lets you invest in private credit. That's an asset class of loans and debt from non-bank lenders. So, for example, small businesses, a startup, you can't just go to Chase, right? So they tap these markets when they cannot access the public credit markets. Uh, as a risk disclosure, these investments are private placements and speculative debt investments that are only available to accredited investors. To learn more about the risks involved in these investments, please visit percent.com slash terms dash and dash conditions. And don't just read about the upside and yields. Read about the downside and potential risks in every investment you make. Okay. Uh, Rich Bonko is here. Harry Gornto, Victor Monaco, Sean Graylish, uh, David Wasaki, Dave Airy, all the guys and gals who are here early. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming for the live uh, airing of the show. Dr. Horton says, let's do this. I agree. Uh, Duncan Hive, put your bees up real quick while we're talking. Um, today is a little bit of a historic day, I think, for crypto. This is like, I, I was actually, I was texting with, um, I was texting with the guys who do uh, Billions. And I was like, man, I, I wish this never happened so we could have invented this story. This is an amazing storyline. And it's like not stopping. So I think what we want to do is just a quick explanation of how we got to uh, what occurred today. And then we'll get into what actually occurred today. Michael, I'm going to lean on you for uh, the background here. Let's, let's zoom out before we zoom in, shall we? What do you say? Mm. We're going to start with Sam Bankman Freed who the story is obviously still being written, but this was the guy. This is, yeah. I don't know when this, when the story was, but he was hailed as the JP Morgan, the savior this of, summer. of crypto. He yeah. was buying up all of the distressed assets. At one point, he even told the Financial Times that, quote, if we are the biggest exchange, buying Goldman Sachs and CME is not out of the question at all. And so the, 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 the story that we find ourselves in today is this has taken a, a hard turn for the worse. Sam's net worth, according to Bloomberg, is down 93% in the last 24 hours. Um, oh, that's nothing. From 14 you can make that back. billion to 990 million, which um, that's, you know, that's quite a decline. So, all right. What you just happened? need another mania that you founded a company right before it starts. So, what, ha make that so what happened? All right. I'm going to lean on Wall Street Odds, who sent me an article that they put together today. It all started with Coindesk. The publication, they released an article. This was not that. This was last week. Yeah, last week. Showing that most of Alameda's net equity was in FTT tokens, which are issued by FTX. Can, Go ahead. Can you explain the relationship between FTX and Alameda? So Alameda is one of the biggest crypto trading shops in the world. And uh, Sam Bankman-Fried started it. He was a quant trader. He started crypto when he realized that, that he could ARB uh, prices in the U.S. to Japan, Japan or wherever and, he was right, doing right. it. Um, and then he started, he said, wait, we could go way bigger. Because as a, as a trader, the, the opportunities are just only so big, right? There's not enough money to arm all this stuff. So they set up an exchange, FTX, and there was a lot of chatter that like, is there, is there, is there a conflict of interest or maybe breach of security that FTX yeah. is, is the exchange and, and Alameda is the, the trading shop. And he's, he's the majority owner of both of these. So, all right. So the report from Coindesk showed that Alameda had approximately $14 billion of assets of which the largest and third largest holdings were FTT, unlocked FTT and FTT collateral. Not exactly sure what that means, but FTT are the tokens that are issued by FTX. FTT is like the way it was explained to me today after I said it was a stable coin on the air uh, on CNBC. I apologize. Someone's like, it's not really a stable coin. It's more like a pseudo equity it's like shares. token. It's like shares yeah. in FTX, but in digital form. And okay. Whatever. So, but like that is, 
this, this like solves a mystery. Like people that were like, well, wh- how do we know FTX has the money to do all these bailouts? Like including of uh, what was the big one? They did, BlockFi, BlockFi and Voyager. Like how? Like how do we know? So this was the asset that they were using to back all of these rescues? I don't know if that's true. I think a lot of it was cash. I don't know if that's true. But the problem was the document that Coindesk uh, released also showed that the company had $8 billion in in, in liabilities. So uh, their $6.6 billion in net equity assets minus liabilities was FTX tokens, which are printed out of thin air, which is sort of what what Sam described with, with Matt Levine a couple of months ago. Yeah. Well, so now, so let's fast forward. So there's this thing going on all summer where companies are getting into trouble because of the meltdown of Three Arrows Hedge Fund, and everybody made loans to them, and nobody's getting paid back. So now you've got uh, clients on these brokerage platforms or on these exchanges or whatever, and they want to withdraw money, and the money is just not there. So you have a liquidity crunch. So CZ, who's the founder of Binance, and uh, and and Sam Bankman Fried are kind of like looking at every one of these rescues, and I don't want to say competing, but like if somebody's going to buy it, the other one's not, right? So they're almost like they're playing J.P. Morgan, both of them, because they seem to be the two players with the most liquidity and the the biggest cojones to actually do this stuff while crypto is melting down. So, so let me lean on Wall Street odds one more second here. So he explains it nicely. So lack of regulation and oversight allowed the same person, which is SBF, to own both one of the largest crypto exchanges, FTX, and one of the largest crypto trading firms, Alameda, without any clear protections for the other participants on the FTX exchange. This led to Binance's CEO seeing an opportunity to bring down one of its largest and fastest growing competitors. Binance exploited FTX's seemingly shady connections to Alameda to trigger fear in FTX market participants. Wait, wait, but Once uh, the fear had taken hold, it used FTX weakened state to purchase them at what, like what? But I want to say, like, this is like a thing that was out in the open that everybody knew about. Nobody was like whispering about it. They were saying it out loud. It was like uh, Sam Bankman Freed is going to utilize FTX's brand and Alameda's capital to rescue these companies where he is both a customer with assets on deposit, meaning he has to get paid back, and he's a creditor because like he like he like has lent them money also like it this is not even like um related party transaction stuff this is like it, it emerged this summer that this is just like a whole web of things that are interrelated and balancing each other out and it's a lot of like arm's length stuff that you would not be able to do as a regulated wall street firm correct and so today is what tuesday so this is i think on sunday night cz who is the 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 owner of binance tweeted so binance was an early investor in in, in ftx in, in ftx yeah, yeah. so he he caught word that i think sam was was talking shit to the regulators about binance and trying to undercut him so he tweeted as part of binance's exit from ftx equity last year binance received roughly 2.1 billion dollars equivalent in cash um busd and ftt due to recent revelations that have come to light We've decided to liquidate any remaining FTT in our books. And I think that was around $500 million. Oh he said God. we will try to do so in a way that minimizes market impact. Yeah, LOL. I mean, this was funny. This is like so gangster. This was, he, this was ludicrous at the time. So this is, this is he, he, he essentially caused a run on the bank. This yeah. is like 10 steps he, removed from when Schwab eliminated commission-free trading. TD Ameritrade stock fell 20% and then Schwab bought them a few months later. This is like that times a billion. Dude, this is the most gangster. This is like, listen, Screech, I heard you've been like uh, talking shit about like how Binance isn't regulatorily compliant and we're offshore and blah, blah. And you know what? How about this? I'm liquidating 2.1 billion of your of your monopoly money. And now what are you going to do about it? And what he did about it, it looks like... And I read this reporting at like three different places, but don't quote me on it. They uh, uh, either Alameda or FTX or both spent the last three days and hundreds of millions of dollars trying to keep that FTT tokens price propped up. And I think they ran through all their liquidity while six billion dollars worth of withdrawal requests came in. And you just get to a point where it's like we ain't going to have the money. 
to give everyone back their shit. So yesterday, Sam tweeted, a competitor is trying to go after us with false rumors. FTX is fine. Assets are fine. Now, guess what? That might have been true. That, that might have been he, true. But he, ha he like almost has to do this because Twitter is the regulation of, of crypto. Like the consensus on Twitter, the con I'm not saying anyone's a con man, but I, I do want to point out where that word comes from. It comes from confidence. And this applies to like, honestly, it applies to the U.S. Central Bank. It applies to like all fiat currency. It applies to shares of every company. Confidence is like the thing that in the end, it's everyone the is. That's the, the currency. currency. So of course he has to go on Twitter. And by the way, everyone who's in the crypto world is on Twitter. It's where they get their news. It's where they form their opinions. It's where the consensus comes from. It's almost the equivalent of the New York Stock Exchange 100 years ago. So he has to do what he can to protect his user base and calm things down. I don't, even, also, fault, I don't even fault him for that. And he also might have been telling the truth. They might have been fine. However, uh, somebody tweeted, crypto exchange FTX saw around $6 billion of net withdrawals in 72 hours before Tuesday morning. So before Tuesday morning. This uh, Sam, this is allegedly uh, Sam sent this in a telegram message to staff. And so there was a run on the bank. And then Binance said, yeah, we'll save you now. Now we'll save you. So that was yesterday. Sam said a competitor, you know, FTX is fine. are fine. Today, he tweeted, hey, all, I have a few announcements to make. Oh Things have come full circle. God. And FTX.com's first and last investors are the same. We have come to an agreement on a strategic transaction with Binance for FTX.com. Now, this is pending due diligence. What could that even look like? Dude, how about it's not even a binding letter of, in of intent, which means... Like, I don't, do we have, do we have CZ's announcement? His name is uh, Cheng Peng Zhao. All right. Everyone calls him CZ. Do we have his announcement? Cause he's like, we have a non-binding LOI. You know what a non-binding LOI is? You could write one of those once a day. I could send one of those to David Solomon and try to buy Goldman Sachs. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so he said this afternoon, FTX asked for our help. There is a significant liquidity crunch to protect users. We signed a non-binding LOI intending to fully acquire FTX.com and help cover the liquidity crunch. We'll be conducting a, a, a full due diligence in the coming days. Full due diligence. They might not like what they see. Who knows what the hell else is going on there? They might just say, you know what? Yes, it'll be expensive if crypto crashes because we let FTX go, but we are going to let them go. And what? nobody has any recourse. Non-binding LOI. Take me to court over a non-binding LOI. This is not a done deal. Well, he might, he might say that the, the fallout from not doing this the spillover is is so expensive. I want to see I I want to see Brian Armstrong step in tomorrow morning. I don't think he can. This is not FTX US. This is the international piece, which is care. their whole business. <laughs> I don't care. care. I want to see more than I want to see more than one. It. I want to see more than one company conducting due diligence on this thing. Um. So yeah, this is this is. I mean, this I don't is, care. Honestly, I don't care. This, I really this, don't care, this is this is this is a mess. Uh. So there's gonna be a lot of fallout. For example. Sam owns seven and a half percent or thereabouts of Robinhood. Uh, and oh, so we have this chart. Uh, yeah. Look at this shit. So Robin looked great into earnings, popped on earnings. It was and... it was like kind of breaking out. No, the earnings weren't even the good. earnings weren't even good, but the stock was moving up. And uh, FTX has what? What do they have? Fifteen percent of this thing or five? No, 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 no. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. So that's the first thing to get liquidated. Probably yep, already happened. Gone. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, vey. Can you imagine? Why are they? And they're all like every. They're also like interrelated with each other. Every every one of these Web three uh, guys is like tied in with everyone else. Well, so it's, let's look at the, the highly at, incestuous. So the token the token is now down seventy seven percent, which that's you know awful. The market cap was around three billion. Uh, Wait, what is what is this? This, this is, is the, this is the price of FTT. This is a weekly candle chart. Oh, well, that's a zero. So isn't it? How, well, does, how does this work I exactly? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, is anyone buying it on, on the planet? Well, yeah. Listen, it's up. They uh, are. It's up. It's up uh, fifty percent in the last two hours. No, it's listen. It's down seventy-seven percent on the day. <laughs> it's down seventy-seven percent on the day. It was three billion yesterday. Three and a half billion yesterday. It's now what? What is it now? Uh, Seven hundred million. I mean. Oh, uh, yo. Uh, I know we're going to talk about the election next. MJG in the chat. Is asking wasn't he, wasn't Sam Bankman Fried a top five contributor to political top, spend? He was number two, number two, fifty two million dollars personally. Um, his, so his his email he's right to, behind Citadel, who was seventy. It's, his he's email, in the big leagues. His email to investors leaked. It was it was you know not great. 
I'm sorry. Hi, all. Hey, all. I'm sorry I've been hard to contact the last few days. I wish I could have been more communicative during this process, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to be, I wasn't able to. Uh, things were coming together dynamically. Um, I'll likely be quite swamped. Dynamic. He ended it with this. He ended it with this. Anyway, anyway. So, okay. <laughs> anyway, I'll write more of a retrospective <laughs> later when I have time to. I'm sorry I didn't do better, and I'm going to do what I can to protect customer assets and your investment. So I'm sure I'm sure he will, but bro, how how crazy is uh anyway? <laughs> anyway, anyway, a little bit a little bit uh, a little bit lax. So what are we there's, doing? There's, there, there's a million questions. We don't know the fallout, but what happens to like <coughs> all of their assets, all the things that they were, that they rescued? I don't know, like what happens to like BlockFi or any of these companies? What happens to the to the, the FTX arena? They signed a 19 year deal for well, 135 all right. million dollars with 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 the Miami Heat. So there's a clause in there. There's a clause in there that if the company does something humiliating or goes on like Enron had stadium naming rights in Houston um, before and during, and they they wiped that shit right out. So that I mean that's not the issue. The issue is there were several rescued things relying on this guy not to go to zero this summer and i don't know what the status of those are if you're like if you're cz you already looked at those things you already did passed. your due diligence passed. and you yeah. passed yeah. so now do you, do you want them now i don't know um, how would anyone know i don't really? know I'm, I'm kind of surprised that bitcoin's like holding in relatively speaking it was eighteen thousand five hundred. I i feel like this you know this could have been the crack that sends it to 10k uh or lower we'll see it is the, the story is still being told um, so let me like can yeah. i can i give you sure. like the other version the other version is all all of the crypto people become bitcoin maxis and they just say DeFi maxis, DeFi maxis. Why are we putzing around with all these centralized exchanges and uh, coins being issued by quasi corporations and all this bullshit? The real thing is right here, right in front of our face. It's Bitcoin. It's ETH. Nobody controls it. Um, it's DeFi. I don't know what that means. What do you mean? It's all the lending protocols and the automated market makers where. You just get liquidated. Like it's, it, it, it's, there's no trust. It's fine. Put up your collateral. That's it. If you're lying to me, you, you'll get liquidated in two seconds. Fine. But I don't think people in a flight to safety are like looking for a coin with a hundred million dollar market. Well, cap. and DeFi is also years away from like, no shit. About I mass think adoption. It's so confusing. I think like if you're, if you're a crypto person and the money's not leaving crypto, it's, and it, and it's leaving things like FTT that haven't blown up yet. I could imagine it going into Bitcoin is all I'm saying. Can you be like, can you be like or, bullish, or like bullish circle on, or... on, on what's on, on blockchain technology and the future of financial rails and all that stuff and be appalled and horrified at all of this shit. Cause that's kind of where I am. Like it, it's tough because these people are so, these people are so all or nothing. Like they're so like they, they might be singing a different tune. Now you would know better than me because I'm not, I'm not in the arena on Twitter, but like, Every interaction I've ever had with somebody that like decided they're going to make uh, crypto their life's work, like they started a company or they left a Wall Street trading debt, they're so <clears throat> they're so all or nothing that there's there's like no room for nuance. So you say to them like, okay, there's probably something great here, but it's surrounded by scam artists, people who don't know what they're doing, people who mean well, but are going to blow up, people who like are taking on too much leverage because they're insane. They're like, no, it's not like that at all. You just, you that's read too exactly, much Bloomberg. That's exactly what it's like. But that's what it is. Yeah. That's exactly what it's like. We know it. Um, all right. So Dan Primack tweeted, FTX investor tells me that the company has not yet sent them any information on the deal. Um, this was, of course, prior to, I guess, an hour ago when the, when the email was sent out. Now hearing this from additional VC sources, total cluster, this really could be the death knell for crypto VC, not exaggerating. So Eric Newcomer tweeted, Sequoia invested in a $420 million round oh in FTX God. at a $25 billion valuation in October and a consortium with Paradigm invested $400 million at a $32 billion Who's valuation. Paradigm? That's a big one, right? Paradigm's another big one. SoftBank invested, and now it's selling in a fire sale. This is a truly crazy event in a startup world, dot-com bus level event. Yeah, this is a big one. So this these guys one. are investing at a $32 billion valuation and they're not here to outbid CZ to rescue this thing for a billion dollars? What the hell is going on? How could something be worth $32 billion or zero like with no stops along the way? I bet you we have not seen the, the, the end of the story. No. I, it, it, it's, no not way. it's not possible that the Valley and all these brilliant people – could have put so much money into this thing 
at a valuation of thirty two billion and they're ready to flush it uh two months later. Sam six said later. we've entered into a non binding agreement with Binance to buy FTX. This is an, is it this is in his investor letter. What does that mean exactly? That's a good question. And unfortunately I don't have a perfect answer for you because the details are still being hashed out. We'll keep you updated as we learn more over the next days and weeks. So yeah, this is we don't know. So by the way, we had an election today, which is like the which you obviously got pushed down by this. There was a Twitch stream up only, which is uh Kobe and I don't know who else is in there. Uh Shkreli and Doquan were in there. This guy Doquan is on the run. And Shkreli literally said to him, uh, like, jail's not that bad. And that's not, I'm not paraphrasing. He, he actually said that. All right, get these guys out of my face. Uh, all right. Uh, listen, I, I don't think, this is my final thought on this. I, I think there are many clever, creative people building things in this space. We haven't actually found the use for any of it other than to drive someone else into bankruptcy. But they are not, benefiting from the ambiguous nature of the current regulation. Like, I know they want decentralization. I know they want to stick their middle finger up at JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and the Fed and and um and the banking system, et cetera. But like this is not better. It's just no. it's not better. Like people are at more risk this way than getting screwed over on a credit card APR by MasterCard. Like this is all worse. So I don't, I don't want to be like a complete nihilist here, but guys, clean it up. I mean, what, what are we doing here? Can this I make is one final insane. point? Insane. There was Please. a question about like whether, like how big crypto was, whether it, 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 there was there, there's a potential uh, contagion ramifications. Not anymore. It's well, the DAO da was up. The DAO was up over one percent today. So I don't think there are mass implications for this reverberating through the financial system. It's I mean, too that's. Small. Listen, I, I was in texts all day with like people who are getting this news third and fourth hand. They don't understand what's going on. They all own Bitcoin like I do. They all own it at Coinbase or at, at Gemini or somewhere. Um, I, maybe one one person has an FTX account, but like they like they don't understand what's going on. They just see like holy shit, this thing's down another twenty percent today. What's going on? And my answer is always like A, I don't know, and B, I hope you also own own Berkshire Hathaway. Like it's like you should. Yes, you sh if you if you're a wealthy person, well, everyone I'm talking about is like multi million dollar net worth. Yeah, you can own some crypto, but I also hope you own some REITs. Like I hope this isn't your whole show, because not office REITs, God. not office REITs, not office REITs. No, but like I hope you have like something that's not crypto also, like as a chaser, because this is going down hard. So anyway, all right, that's that's uh. That, are we doing any more on this, or it's no, enough? I think, I think I think we said enough. I think we uh, gave yeah, people sucks. a really good explanation of what's going on here, though. I hope so. Right? This is this is this is a tough day. Um, Should we get Sam Bankman Freed on the podcast? Well, I'd love to talk to Sam. Hey, I, let me. Is sucks, anybody? I mean, the, how many people in in, in 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 FTX employees? Like, this is had no fucking idea any of this was about to happen. Oh, no, how could you know? That's the problem with no regulation. By the way. I think Sam Bankman Freed is one of these people who would thrive if there was a baseline of rules. And he just knew where the line was, and then he could just do what he wants to do. He is probably a guy that could buy the CME someday. So you think this? You think uh, we're getting a Bitcoin ETF anytime soon? Yeah, tomorrow. Hey, what I want to know is: is there anybody right now on Twitter systemically important that's like, "Hey, we're fine." Just like let me know because I don't want to, I don't want anything to do with it. Well, so I'm not selling my there? Bitcoin. I'm holding it to zero. What I don't are, think it's going uh, to zero, by the way. I don't think it's going to zero, by the way. But I, I, what's I, like what's like Andreessen saying, or um, what's his name, Novogratz? Are those guys are those guys out there talking or not really? I don't know. See, I, I don't. Mark I don't know. Cuban. I don't know. Who are the other know. Pied Pipers? I don't know. Any, anybody have anything to say? Um, all right. All right. Let's move on. I'm I'll better off not. Know. I'm better off not knowing. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing next? Oh, where, it's election night in America. Right. We're doing I'm that. Voting, I'm voting after this. I haven't voted yet today. Uh, when do the polls close? Like Nine eight o'clock, right? Whatever. I'll be there. I hope. Uh, okay. So in New York, everyone's turning out for the governor race in New York state because we have like out of control crime. And this guy, Lee Zeldin, I think has done a very good job. I'm not saying who to vote for. This guy, Lee Zeldin has done a great job getting people to not talk about the fact that he's an election denier. Why are we talking about local politics? Who cares? Well, no, I'm making the point. Crime is completely out of control in the city and emanating outward from the city. And that seems to be the number one thing when I talk to people that are like voting. Um, some people that have never voted before. 
this is the thing that's getting them off their asses to vote, and it's crime, well, crime, 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 crime. I, well, I'm also a one issue voter. I'm all about blockchain regulation. <laughs> All right, let's who's, talk. Who's your, who's, your can- who's your candidate for that? <laughs> so this is interesting. Bespoke had this chart. What the hell are you doing with that coin? What is What type of coin is that? What is that, Bitcoin? What is that? I'm sorry. Um, midterms tend to swing away from POTUS. Only one midterm in the modern era has seen the president's party gain seats. So what this says to me is people always hate the politicians. Always. They yeah, always I think want he's going to lose. Like, he's going to lose like net 25, 30 seats. But it's always, and it's nobody's going to be surprised. It's, it's always, always this, this way. way. People are always yep. pissed off. I would like to point your attention to an article that Kai Wu did at Sparkline. I, you probably didn't read this yet, but it is so good. It is uh, so fucking good. Um, no, I didn't read this. The this t- just come out? The t- yeah, this is, uh, yeah, six days ago. The TLDR is firms that invest, I'm, I'm quoting him, firms that invest a high share of their market cap in lobbying tend to outperform both the market and their industry peers. Political capital is like other intangible assets as it tends to be undervalued by the stock market. Read this post. It's The, the work that he does is like face-blowing. But let's just get to some of the charts. Okay. Uh, first, we're talking about electoral price inflation. This is, you know, only up only. The cost of election are, are you know, this is Look inflation. Look at this. And th- this money goes to Facebook and Google and um, a handful of... Uh, a handful of broadcast networks. We've got a few charts, so let's keep it moving. Total lobbying. Uh, again, it's, it's it's breaking out, uh, which is, uh, I don't know if that's Great. nice to see, but it is what it is. Total lobbying by public companies. So we had to like stitch this together. Um, this is kind of surprising in that it's, it's smaller than I would have guessed. Like $21 million from Amazon doesn't sound like... Well, there are limits. There, there are limits. You can't just like, you can't just like, as a corporation, just like dump... A billion dollars. See, I'm not. I'm not. Not a political guy. All right. Next chart. Top lobbied issues. Number one, perhaps not surprisingly, taxation. That's it. This taxation. is for, corp- for corporations. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Of course it is. Um, but it come down a little bit. Like Medicare, Medicaid. If you have a horse in that race as a corporation, you have to be making donations there. Like this is part of your responsibility to shareholders. I'm not saying lobbying is good. I'm saying the fact that it exists. There's going to be somebody on the other side, and you have to get done what you say you're going to get done for your shareholders. You just have to play. It's we, it's gross, but it is what it is. We've spoken a lot over the past couple of weeks about seasonality after midterms, after midterm elections. I know it doesn't have to follow history, but the evidence there is pretty compelling that stocks do much better after midterm elections. Well, yeah, well, we like the finality that it's over. And, uh, you know, one thing – I said this on TV today, though. One thing about the gridlock stats is – they're kind of they're kind of bullshitty, and I'll just like paraphrase uh, Brian Westbury from First Trust, and you know he was talking about like uh, here there are some big differences between the current economic situation and those other two episodes. He saw him at Clinton and Obama in November '94. CPI was running at 2.7 percent. Um, November '94 is when the Republicans took the House and Senate, and Clinton was left in the White House. In November 2010, CPI was running at 1.1%. Right now, inflation is 8. And, it's a bear and the Fed is ratcheting up rates yeah. regardless who wins. Um, the other thing is that <clears throat> you might have had theoretical gridlock during those Clinton years that were taking those stock market returns from. But in reality, Clinton was doing all kinds of deals with uh, the Republican Congress. Um, and Obama didn't do nothing with his Republican. <laughs> so it's not... No, but I'm saying like it's not like uh, it's not like gridlock is like actual gridlock. So the returns of those two eras of gridlock between the president and Congress, a there are other variables that might matter more, like the rate of inflation, and b uh, what you see is not always what you get. You might have quote unquote gridlock, but actual presidential cooperation with Congress. So I think. Uh, we should probably just be happy that we like that that the election comes to an end, but not actually be looking at the returns of past periods of gridlock and thinking that means anything for us because it really doesn't. Two more the charts. Big thing, by the way, the big thing that's not leaving after the election is inflation. Uh, is inflation. That's going to uh, stick around for a little while. All right. So Kai was able to break down uh, partisan industries based on – not only where companies donate, but where their employees donate. And he used like machine learning, uh, natural language processing to figure this out. So this is very unsurprising, but just to see it broken down this way is pretty cool. Hold this up. This, uh, 
Very intuitive. Media yes. and entertainment. If you would have told me they were at the top of the most democratic uh, campaign yep, we know. donation. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Um, and then materials and energy. Yep. Right. Right. Yep. I mean, that's that's this is one of the most intuitive. Uh, yep. One of the most intuitive charts. All you right. So check imagine. this out. He said we can also use our partisan metric to build Democrat and Republican stock portfolios for each Russell 1000 stock. We calculate the share of employee donations to each party. The Democrat portfolio consists of the quartile of stocks with the highest Democrat donation share, while the Republican is the opposite. We, we balance monthly. And what he's trying to show here is how mean reverting this is. Pretty, pretty cool. Oh, so back to 1994, whatever I mean, really, advantage the, the stocks in any industry has, they post. go away. Read this post. It's phenomenal. This is crazy. It's phenomenal. This but there is a really big difference in the moment, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, like, so let's take, let's take this period, 2006, right? Where, where, uh, Republican stocks are starting to outperform. What's so interesting about that is it keeps going through Obama's full four year term before it reverses. Mm. Like that's like, like it, it's, it's interest It's interesting to me that you get some one person in the white house and then the knee jerk reaction from voters two years later in the midterms is to complicate things for that person in the White House. And then you could get the big reactions in the in the stock sectors. So I think that's real I think that's really interesting. We'll definitely are we linking to that? Sparkline Capital? Oh yeah. Hey, one last okay. thing. Uh, uh Ben just sent this to me. So Felix Salmon tweeted, um, the six billion dollar run on the bank of FTX in seventy two hours. The biggest bank run in US history was Washington Mutual in two thousand eight. That was sixteen billion sixteen point seven billion dollars in nine days. I mean, this is a lot of money. And there's nobody in charge of it. The Washington Mutual had, the, had, had oversight. The Federal Reserve was in charge of uh, bank oversight. I don't know if the Office of Thrift, Thrift Supervision would have been in, uh, over, overlooking Washington Mutual, but like, certainly the FDIC. Certain, like, who is in charge of this shit? Twitter? Well, we're like going to talk about Twitter the, in a second. community? But- no, but uh, I, I can't even. Just to I don't show even how know powerful, what's going on. How powerful that platform is! It had the ability to do this to cause a, like a, a run on the second biggest uh, crypto exchange in the world or third biggest, whatever Dude, it is. This All happened right. with a tweet. This happened with a tweet. Yeah. We need to shut everything down and and go back to subsistence living farming. <laughs> I can't. I can't come up with another answer. Stop it! All right, All stop right. it. Um, okay, so I wanted. So so. The, the, the Fed <laughs> must enjoy what's going on. Not that they like to see people losing money, you know, per se, but all of the excess has been ripped out of basically every corner of the market. What is left? I can't believe I bought Miami real estate. That city is going to burn and then flood. Stop. I, this, is where you, this is where all this bullshit money went. It, it, like it's, it's very concentrated in, around the neighborhood of Brickell. This is where all the the Lambos and uh, the Ferraris and all the crypto money went. The Fed is most certainly going to get its way on bringing down inflation in South Florida. 100%. Let's look at the market cap of these five companies that are each down 90% from their high. 90, that's a lot of percent. Carvana is down 98%, the biggest loser of them all. So uh, Carvana was $31 billion in market cap at the peak. It's now less, you know, it's $800 million. Hold on. Carvana is down to eight hundred million. These companies, these companies the- were a hundred eighty billion dollars collectively, and okay. now they're thirteen billion. Which of these do you think is the is is the one that is like the most the, the least? What am I trying to say? Like an unforced error? Which or which of these companies? Which of these companies just had the the least? Uh, Error Wayfair. and just got caught up in this. Wayfair. So we'll, we'll get into we'll get Wayfair into this. was selling furniture quietly we'll, before yeah, the pandemic. Yeah. We'll get into this in a second. It wasn't their fault. So uh, Ryan Lundquist, I guess he's a Sacramento appraiser, according to his Twitter bio. He said, market change hasn't been easy for iBuyers. Here are open doors, active listings in the Sacramento region. 76% of units are listed below their acquisition price. Blade and Cartage. Uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is the difference between the acquisition price and the current listing price. And you see, you can't probably can't see. You have to squint, but that's a lot of red. All right. So you had an algorithm buy up all this shit when interest rates are zero. And then Fed funds rates went over 4%. And obviously, the mortgages are more expensive. And none of these houses are going to sell for what they sold for last time. Not like totally the end of the world. Um, so that's let's not look- a bad, that's not a faulty algorithm. 
that's a bad economic forecast. It's like, both. It's probably both. Let's look at let's look at Peloton. So the price to sales ratio was over twenty times at its peak. It's now less than one time sales. And what happened was, I think you could maybe say this was an unforced error. Peloton got overly ambitious about how many stop uh, here about how many units they would sell, and their free cash flow went mega negative, and the market killed it. Um, can they get back to positive? Uh, free cash yes. flow. What would they so, have to do? They so, would have so, to stop manufacturing units immediately. Well, right? well, I think I think they're on their way to doing that. But Peloton subscription is like think three hundred million dollars. Their subscription revenue is I think three hundred million dollars a quarter. So, so they're, so they're spending more than a billion dollars a year. What the fuck are they spending money on? Manufacturing, marketing. Stop. So, well, they Outsource. did. They did. They did. Their 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 net income. Lo- their net loss is shrink dramatically. Okay. And this the- stuff should be made. This stuff. Listen to me. This stuff should be made in Asia. Stop. It should be, yeah, it should yeah, be on you know demand. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Genius. You know how to fix Peloton. I'm just saying. The, the, I, I just fixed it. The co- the net losses are shrinking dramatically. The stock actually looks okay. All right. Here's Wayfair. Um, look at Wayfair's free cash flow. They now, were, what, is, what is this? It's like Wayfair Wicker is, Fern. Is this like Pure One Imports? Wayfair is, um, what's the other one? No, it's Wayfair. Yeah, I used Wayfair in the pandemic. So did everyone. Look at their free what's cash the song? flow. Wait, what's the song? Wayfair. What? How does it go? What do they no. say? You have just what You're I just want what or I need, something? Which, uh, uh, anyway, uh, okay. it's a good jingle. So put that chart up back up for one more second. So they were a huge beneficiary of COVID through no fault of their own. Um, and their free cash flow went vertical. What, did and you then buy, they pro- what kind of piece of shit furniture did you buy from this thing? Come on. What do you, you bought furniture from your house from Dude, I have two young children. I buy my, I buy my kitchen stools that we replace every six months. Got it. Okay. Um, right. so their free cash flow went crazy and then they probably over invested thinking that this was a structural change and it wasn't and they got yeah. boned. They would have been much better off, much better off if the pandemic never happened. But didn't they, all right, but counter, counter, not counterpoint. Cause I don't know, but weren't they in a position where people were like yelling at them? Like, yo, where's my shit? I ordered like, mm-hmm. didn't they feel that same, uh, demand crunch that everyone else felt? That was doing e-commerce. And then they probably or, over-order, and now they're stuck with a glut. And uh, anyway, the pandemic- It's, survival. it's survivable, so, though, for so, Wayfair, right? I don't know the business that well. But the bigger point is this. All you know, these, wait, wait. You know what Teladoc did? Holy shit. I don't know Teladoc's story. I really don't know anything They did it. a huge acquisition right at the top of work right. from home. Yeah, that'll get you. They bought like a, like a diabetes monitoring technology company. And that was a highly inflated stock price. And they put a premium on that and they issued shares to do it. And they just like, they, what happened? They like blew, they like blew up the whole, the whole business with a, with one acquisition. It never recovered. So anyway, the bigger point in all of this is that all of these stocks are down 90%, 98% in some cases, crypto, uh, just everything's blowing up. It's all, it's all of the, the excess that we were complaining about. It's, it's more than gone. Now, I guess you could say, well, sheep is still worth a billion. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's not all gone, but it's mostly gone. Uh, it takes a really long time though for that to like work its way through the economy, like housing, like the, like it, you can't flip a switch and change the economy. It really takes a buildup of losses over a long period of time before the vast majority of people change their spending habits so is the wealth effect not bullshit but what if what if asset prices go down and the economy never softens would can't people happen. change would people, no, I, I know it probably happen. can't but would, but but if it did would people change their spending habits if your house goes down would you change your spending habits if you still have a yes. job if the economy doesn't soften i don't know about that well it, it it just takes a long time because most people aren't selling their house and have no plans to right so it takes it just it takes a really long time but i do think the, the stock market and obviously the stimulus combined and the value of houses, those three things all exploding to the upside to, in order to work that off and to convince people that things are different. You, you can get them to answer a survey and say they think it's a recession. That's different from getting them to cancel a trip to Disneyland. Josh, let me interrupt. So this it's, takes it's, a long it's, time. It's, it's 10 minutes after the hour. Bitcoin is at 18,574. Next topic. Oh, we have to keep going. Next all right. topic. Uh, that, was my, what, that was my radio voice. Um, Oh, you're up. It's, Twitter. Is it, is it me? It's you. Oh, let's, we can do this two seconds. How's yeah. the transition going? It's great. Come on. Wait, so it, they're not, so the last I heard is they're not going to do the $8 thing right away. They're going to wait until after the election because don't they don't want to verify all these the, fake the, scumbags. They, they fire too many people and now are trying to get them back. It's, it's, 
you know, it's it's a clown show. Here's oh, here's here's something. They're so, trying to get them that we we fired you yesterday, they fi- but they fi- I think they actually are you busy? fired. So it's like the reverse. It's like the reverse uh, George Costanza. Wait, would it be joke. funny? Would it be funny? Would it be funny if it turns out it's easier to build a rocket and send it to Mars than it is to manage Twitter? Wouldn't People, that be like really well, funny? Well, it's very that's that's <laughs> physics. That's a calculation. This is like you can't quantify people's emotions. This is it's insane, impossible. people. It's insanity. Right. So, Elon is 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 making this shit up as he goes. Guess what? That's what all businesses are. This is just out in the public. No, yes, I had a is. master plan. I had a master plan for our firm. No, you didn't. Stop. And it. I've been executing at a yeah. very very high yeah. level. I okay. read eight books in the morning. <laughs> you wake up at nine thirty. Can we the- do this picture really quickly? Can we can we do this? Um, can somebody in the what chat explain to me? Well, this was just a file photo used in the New York Post. It's like a Getty image. Don't sue us. Um, This is, I guess, Market Street, where Twitter's headquarters in San Francisco is. Mm. How does a person drive or or use this street? Can somebody... It's like like a board game. What's the green and the red? Well, no. What is the zone miles per hour 10? So a car has to do this like L-shaped maneuver to stay in that black lane. The red lane goes into both sides of traffic. I see a little train. You can't see my mouse. I'm rubbing these things with the mouse. I see a little train. What is that? Is that a tram coming through the middle of the street? And then there's black on the other side of the bike lane. Hot. And then there's sticks coming out of the ground. Sticks? You see, like you see oh, those white yeah, rubber? Yeah, yeah. How the fuck do you use the street? I don't know. Is this what San Francisco looks like? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you- um, let's, let's throw up a chart. Of... Is this what the liberals want all of our streets to look like <laughs> all over America? Because I'm not, I, I have enough trouble like with the regular roads. This is too much for me. Stop it. Look all at right. Elon's tweets per day. This is, this, is, this is a great chart. The F, I think this is from the FT. He's getting after it for real. He's doing 25 tweets per day. I hope he's having fun. Anyway, this is, this is quite a regret, I'm sure. Um, okay. Uh, I just want to talk briefly about the 6040. I know we're running late. Nick Majuli did a great post. So we've talked about how like boomers have had it so easy. Uh, investing, stocks always go up. Bonds always went up. Well, actually, for a dollar cost average investor, we're currently experiencing the lowest 30-year performance from 1970 until today. So here's a wild stat. If you invested $10,000 a year, DCA into a 6040 portfolio for the last 30 years, you would have underperformed someone who did the same thing for the 30 years ending in March 2009. Oh, wow. Really? Really. Oh, my God. So, you know, a lot of, first of all, nobody nobody really puts all their money into a 60-40 and then never invests again. No, so no, 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 Hold on. This it's is, a good this thought is, exercise. No, it's not. It's the opposite. This is practical. This is DCA. These are people no, like- I understand that. I'm, that's the okay. point I'm making. The real lived experience is people adding money- right. Uh, at intervals, but the even realer lived experience is the likelihood of you investing the same dollar amount um, on the same schedule for that long of a period of time is also, it's like very unlikely yeah, okay. that, that anybody um, really does that. I actually think that like, there's no wrong answers now for 60, 40 investors or just or asset allocation. If you want to downshift your risk, you could actually do it for the first time in a while and get returns. Because if you went from a 70-30 down to 50-50, you were getting zero on your bonds. Now you can actually get 5% or close to there. And if you want to upshift, you want to upshift in equities because they're on sale, you can do that too. This is such a better starting point for, for some, the, the next dollar that you put into your portfolio. You're putting that dollar in at a 15 forward multiple on the S&P and 4%, you know, the 40% side, a 4% starting yield. With, with like a almost a risk free uh, from a credit perspective, for much better, starting much, much, much better. This is a great, great starting point for new for new money. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it doesn't um, feel good, but much better. All right, let's let's move on. I'm gonna make the case for Facebook. And do actually, we, do we bring Duncan mm-hmm. in for this? Oh, he does he come in for this or what are we know, doing? Duncan, you want you want to hang out? <laughs> <laughs> Duncan, you want to hear my pitch? Sure. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. Mike's so, gonna Mike's gonna pitch us both. I actually. I actually bought Facebook uh, last week. I think at like 90. 90- I sold. I sold it today. Did you? Okay. I'm out. I, um, I get it. Not mad at you. Gain, gain I, of uh, gain of zero. <laughs> Loss of zero. Um, uh, all right. So so here's the deal. Facebook is down seventy eight percent. Whatever it is, I think it's justified. 
Uh, people are scared of an advertising recession that really hasn't showed up yet. They're scared about no more user growth. They're scared about no more uh, average revenue per user growth. They're scared about the insane spending on the metaverse and nobody wants it. Nobody's asking for it. They're scared about their hiring. Meta had 83,000 employees at the end of the second quarter, which is up 32% from a year ago. They're scared about TikTok eating their lunch and they've lost faith in management. So what's left? Yeah, so, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so it's all very justified. This thing, is I, kitchen, this thing is kitchen sinked. And I, and I understand that buying a stock that's crashing is a risky thing to do. This is not a trade for me. This is an investment. So I'm prepared to lose whatever, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and I did not put on a full position. I put on like 75% of what I'm going to, what I want to buy. Um, all right. So let me give you, let's go through some charts just to, just to put some meat on these bones. So here's the revenue of Meta. Uh, just incredible. I don't know what that Kager is, but you know, one of the strongest companies in the history of the world in terms of their revenue acceleration from where, wherever they started. Uh, next chart, please. Problem is, as oh. you can see, not good. You know, not it's, good. Ama it's, it's, ama it's amazing. If we were to overlay, if we were to overlay the stock price, like it, it makes perfect sense that the stock has done what it's done. Yeah. Not good at all. Uh, next chart, please. Uh, okay. Their capex is out of control, out of control. But I think it's this for a is good the reason, easiest like thing. This is the easiest thing to fix. They, I know they're spending on AI and it's not all metaverse and blah blah blah. This is the yeah. easiest thing for them to fix, even easier than layoffs. Okay. This is so easy for them to come out and just throw us a bone, throw us a bone. Like given the current environment, we are going to be more selective about what investments we make. That's it. The problem, That's ten it, points in the, the stock. They couldn't yeah, just do it. The, the problem is Zuck owns fifty-seven percent of the voting shares, so he yeah. is the boss. He is the boss. Can can I ask a quick question? No. Next chart. Just kidding. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Not what, while I'm pitching, Duncan. What, damn it. what would the market cap of Instagram by itself be? Uh, I think I think I think a year ago I would have told you two hundred billion. Um, now I'm not so sure. Wow. One hundred fifty. It's got. It's bigger than Netflix now. Duncan, a year ago, Facebook was a trillion. So I would have yeah, said yeah. if they did a spinoff, if they took, if they took ten percent of Instagram's equity floated it out that out in the market the implied valuation i think of the whole of instagram would have been 200 and youtube probably not far away like but neither one of these companies have done that and if they didn't do it then i don't know why they would do it now next so. chart uh okay this is the revenue and the expenses are are closing quickly you don't want to see that gap getting filled next chart this is revenue divided by expenses. You want to see this going up, not down. Yep, wrong way. Wrong way, not great. Next chart. Um, okay, so advertising revenue, this might soften. It hasn't yet. It's not the problem. It's That's not the problem. dollars what? nope, What's the problem? Not, It's part of the none problem. Of the, none, of the bears, none of the bears believe that their advertising franchise is, um, is uh, at risk. Not true. Like, and if, if, the, if we have an economic slowdown and advertising pulls back, yeah, yeah, the yeah. first thing to get hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because the whole pie shrinks. They're going to keep their, their market share. None of, that's not the bear. The bear case is the, that there's no more growth there, which is possible for the next year, number one. Number two, that the expenses are going up so quickly um, that it's, it's like – not losses, but like like a huge fundamental deterioration. Nobody really thinks that like Facebook ads aren't going to be as dominant as they are right now. Like they'll keep let's, their share, let's keep even if the overall pie shrinks. Let's get mo keep moving. Uh, daily active users actually, actually not still bad. growing. Not bad. I, Next chart. I think this stat's fake, so okay. I never believe. Could it. be. Could be. Uh, this is not great. They're they're not. You know, they've squeezed every every dollar they can out of out of their users. Um, so that's flat. Michael, Next. they, Michael, they say they're, they're saying, honestly, there's 8 billion people on earth and they're saying they have 2 billion monthly active users. Do you honestly believe that one out of four people on earth are, are on Facebook actively each day or each month? I don't, I just don't believe it. Exactly. So. They're lying. Room for growth. Next chart. I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> uh, is that all the charts I have? Okay. Um, so, okay. All right. So, but here's the thing. Yes, it's it's rolling over a little bit. Their net income, their free cash flow, it's still so they're making so much money. And ultimately, I'm going to hang my hat on the fact that the market is overreacting. Next chart, and uh, this is a dangerous game to play. I understand that. 
Um, but I want to leave you with some thoughts. So this is the, the it's trading at 10 times trailing revenue. Like is all of the selling justified? Most of it, all of it. I don't think so. Uh, all right. Ben Thompson wrote meta, the metaverse company may be a speculative boondoggle, but that doesn't change the fact that the old Facebook is still a massive business with far more of its indicators pointing up and to the right. than it's MySpace analyzer analog analogizers. I, I'm, I can't say that. Want to it's admit. not because Facebook's not MySpace. Facebook's AOL. It, it's, it, they have the wrong, they have the wrong analog. It's, it's AOL. Um, but Next, we, hold and, on. I don't think right, it's AOL. Then. This, they're, they're, okay. Dude, it's not. A, they are the they are the absolute dominant advertising platform in the world. There is no more effective way to reach consumers than Facebook. Hard stop. We agree. Uh, all right, Alex Morris said, if we assume FRL, and by the way, a lot of their money that they're spending is to catch up to TikTok. It's not just in the metaverse. But Alex Morris from uh, the Science of Fitting said, if we assume that FRL, which is the Reality Labs, is worth negative hundred billion dollars, which is a rough guesstimate of cumulative losses over the next five years with zero value created as a result. Everyone agrees the metaverse is bullshit. So if we assume it's worth negative 130, uh, negative 100, uh, I'm sorry, negative 100 billion, that leaves $315 billion for the family of apps. That business will generate $113 billion in, in uh, 2022 revenues. That's crazy. With trail and 12 month EBIT of $48 billion. Um, Where does the negative hundred billion come from? Because that's just, what he's he committed to he spend. Said no, he said, he said he's going to spend ten billion a year for ten years. Yeah, that's a guesstimate. So okay. uh, ultimately, Alex concludes with: If you believe the core business can grow revenues and profitability over time, as I do, you'd have to do some real gymnastics to argue that the family of apps as a standalone company isn't worth significantly more than its implied value. So I think that the stock is undervalued. This is like not in my nature to buy one where of these companies. You, where were you? Where were you? Where were you decide you're wrong? Um, I would. I what, would probably. What are you using as your as your risk parameter? I'm, I'm, uh, I would. I would rather. I would probably add if I if I lose twenty five percent. So you're all right. You're going down with the ship then. Um. Yeah. I mean, if it if it goes yeah. against you, I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm. I'm not. There's not a trade. I'm not like. There's no stop here. I bought a falling knife. It kept falling. It bounced on news of layoffs. I I got out of it. So maybe maybe you'll be right. I'll be wrong. Um. Before we bring this home and I roll out my mystery chart. Uh. If you have not yet liked the video. We've got 200 likes already tonight or something like that. I am seeing in the chat. Should be way more. And we like Come you on. guys. Let me just say so one last thing like in that closing. Video. In closing, I'm probably wrong, so don't follow me into this. But I expect this to be a, a rough road. I don't think it's going to like, I don't think I'm going to like make like 300% in the next like six weeks. I know it's not happening. This is like a multi-year thing. Yo, watch Facebook pops to 120 by I'm next out. Tuesday. Batnick's coming on this show twirling a cane. No, no, no. Right. I'm, no, no, no. I'm not looking for 20. I'm not looking for, I'm, I'm not looking for like a 20% gain. You're coming on the show next week with a, a new gold chain. All right. <laughs> uh, this right, is my mystery on, chart. Go. What do we got? Set it up. Psst. <laughs> Want to see a dead body? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what um, movie is that from? Uh, uh, Stand, by, um, Stand by me? No, no, no. no. Oh, uh, I think. What? Isn't it from? A... Hang out a second. Damn it. All right. Here's a dead body. Right, what, what is, is it? it? What is my mystery chart? I, no, well, come it's on. It's not I... the game. Dude, I give you clues. Give me a fucking clue. All right, I'm going to give you a clue. It's based, it's financial industry, which financial there is no stuff. other, there is no other financial company that looks like this right now other than fintech, but it's not fintech. Okay, I was going to say so far. Oh, PayPal? Close. Um, based on the West Coast. eBay? Okay, let's, let's do the reveal. Silicon Valley Bank, holy shit! And this is just this is just one year chart. Um, this is at a one year return of negative seventy two percent. When did you make Market this chart? Because it's probably worse today. Yeah, uh, maybe. I think we just made it today. Market cap is down thirty one billion. So it was worth forty four billion a year ago. It's worth thirteen. And this company does most of their business with startups and venture right, so backed bullshit is, this, and this crypto is, this and is liquid, this is liquid venture SaaS software companies yeah. and all kinds of shit. Yeah. And you know, it was great on the way up. Uh, John, we have one more chart on this. Oh, so this is Silicon Valley Bank versus the XLF, dude. The XLF e bottomed and is e now rallying. E this is so bad, Josh. I thought this is I, so I thought bad. I thought that body was boys in the hood, but you're right. It's stand by me. Yeah, no, not boys in the hood. Um, um, anyway, so, so Silicon Valley Bank is a lesson to people who overweight um, things like earnings growth or revenue growth when they're selecting securities. 
um, because oftentimes whoever is the fastest grower in a sector, and this is in the XLF, it's not a tech stock. Dude, there's whoever, a time and a place for everything. Everything is cyclical. Everything. Everything in right. the world. Everything in so the world. If, you, if, you, if you remained in this name that relies on IPOs and venture and uh, huge valuations in technology, like if you remained in this name, you really weren't looking at the right thing. The right thing to look at was not the XLF. It was the NASDAQ. So uh, tough, tough situation. And uh, I'm sure it's a, a good company or a great company. I don't know. Uh, it's just they're, they're in the wrong place at the, right, well, at the they, wrong time. They got humbled, as did a lot of investors over Eric, the years this year, myself uh, included. I did some dumb shit. What? Eric Steckler in the chat is saying Sam Bankman Freed will bail out SVB. <laughs> Too soon. Uh, too soon. Oh this FTX God. news is rough. This is this is a this is a black eye. All right. Um, hey, let's let's we'll wrap at six twenty seven. Yeah. Guys All right. All right. That, All right. guys, uh round of applause for Michael Batnick did a great job for explaining the situation. Great job, Duncan, great job, John, Nicole, my whole team, Sean. Everybody's on fire this week. We did a, I think a very informative show tonight. We appreciate you guys showing up. Make sure you smash that like button if you haven't already. Uh tomorrow is Wednesday. Brand new Animal Spirits with Mike and Ben. Look for that on your favorite podcast app. We will see you soon. Thank you.